Remember, brothers and sisters, that shaitan is very much invested in ruining the salah of a believer. In fact, he has an obsession with this because he was one who was invited to pray to Allah in the beginning of time and he refused and he regrets this. But arrogance is preventing him from apologizing and he will not apologize. And so Jahannam will be his home as Allah has told us. And that's why he is immensely bothered at those who stand up to Allah and do what he knows he should have done all those years ago. And that is vow and prostrate to Allah. His first line of attack on you and I is to convince us that there is no need to pray. Salah is futile. So you know many people from your family, perhaps all your friends, may Allah protect them and guide us all, who don't pray. Shaytan has successfully convinced them that Salah is futile. There's no need for it. If, however, he fails in this endeavor and you crush those whisperings and you get into your salah, he doesn't give up. He goes for the second best line of attack, which is what? Delay your salah. And that is why a lot of people, they don't remember the last time they prayed Fajr when it was still dark outside. If and when they pray it, it's only when the sun is halfway up the sky. He will say, delay it, snooze it. It's okay, you have time, combine it. If, however, you pray your salah on time, he will go for his third line of attack. He doesn't give up. And that is what? al waswasa To whisper. He will stand next to you and he will remind you of things that you had completely forgotten about. And you will find that your mind has become such a problem-solving brain in salah, remembering solutions to problems that have passed a long time ago. And you start recalling things that you had completely forgotten about. That is shaitan. If he cannot stop you from praying, he will minimally detract from the reward by distracting. And that is why Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said in his book, Talbis to Iblis, he said, when a person stands up to pray before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan is overcome with a huge amount of jealousy. Because you have just now stood in the greatest of all stations before Allah and the nearest that you can be before him. And it is the station that causes shaitan most pain and most anger. And so he endeavors to ruin your standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It bothers him. It reminds him of a traumatic past. It reminds him of his fate and future. It reminds him of his arrogance. This is the most transformational act that a Muslim can do in his life to say Allahu Akbar and stand in salah. And so jealousy overcomes him. And he begins to try to remind you of things throughout the day to detract from your reward. And so you are to remember, my brother, my sister, that when you are now beginning your salah, imagine that your wage for that salah, figuratively speaking, has been placed in front of you. And you need to hold on for just 10 minutes or so during your salah. And if you manage to pray a salah with khushu'a, attentiveness and humility, you will pocket every penny of that wage. But be careful. You need to be on guard. You need to be vigilant. Because there is a thief. Every time you get caught slipping, you get caught nodding off, you get caught looking around with your eyes or with your heart, shaitan has stolen some of that wage. And that is why by the time you finish your salah, some people will pocket the full wage. Some people will pocket only half the wage. Some people will come back with a third, a quarter, and some people will go with no reward of the salah. And that is why when Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about an intifat, looking around in salah. What did he say? Looking around in salah is theft, which shaitan steals from a person's salah. So where is your heart and where are your eyes and where is your focus on salah? That's why you begin your salah with A'udhu Billahi Shaitan Ar-Rajim Ya Rabbi help me, Ya Rabbi assist me How many of us have walked away from our salah while Shaitan, he is now walking away in a state of hysterical laughter because he knows what he has done to our salah And that's the difference between praying with khushu'a and praying without khushu'a I give you a benchmark, I give you a litmus test a person who prays without khushu'a, he remembers in his or her salah the things that they had forgotten about before the salah. Whereas the one who prays with khushu'a, by the time they finish their prayer, they had forgotten about what they were doing before they started the salah. Allah. And that is why Ibn Qayyim, he speaks about those who are affected so much with the whispering of shaitan and they don't fight him up and they don't think about A'udhu Billahi min shaitan al-Rajim I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan Ibn Qayyim, he said this person comes into salah and then he walks out of the salah carrying the same sins, the same burdens, the same crimes that he had walked into salah with None of them were lifted and removed through the salah he said, the people who benefit from salah, the people who have their sins erased, the people who have the lifting of their burdens are ones who pray salah with khushu'a. They carry out its right and they offer Allah Almighty an attentive heart. These are the people who experience a khifa, a lightness during their salah. And they experience the lifting of a burden. When they finish their prayer, he said, till people will hope or till people will wish that they had not departed from their salah. Have you experienced that before? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to experience the essence of salah. This is why you begin your salah with a'udhu billahi bin shaitan. You're saying, Ya Rabbi, I can't do this on my own. Control him for me, O oh Allah. I can't. Assist me. Keep him at bay. And that's what you do. When there is someone that you can't handle for whatever deficiency or weakness you have, you go to the owner. You go to the very top. You say, please restrain them. I can't take them out myself.
and this is the analogy given by Imam Ibn al-Jawzi. He said that one of our pious predecessors said to his student, what will you do in the situation where shaitan has beautified for you sins? You can't stop sinning. Whether it's things you're looking at, listening, touching, hailing, smoking, buying, selling, whatever it may be. He said to his student, what do you do in a situation where shaitan keeps tempting you to sin? The student he gave the answer that you and I would have given, which is fight shaitan away. He said, what if shaitan comes back a second time? He said, I'll fight him away. And what if he comes a third time? He said, well, I'll repel him, I'll push him away. He said, that's the long route. And then he asked him a question. He said that if you came across the herd of sheep and then the dog of the shepherd came running after you and started barking and prevented you from continuing your journey, what do you do? He said, I will try to repel the dog as much as I can. He said, this is the long way. He said to him, what you need to do is you need to go to the shepherd. You need to go to the owner of the dog and tell him to restrain his dog. That way you'll be able to pass. Do you see what he's saying? You've got to go right to the top. You've got to speak to the owner. Who's the owner of not just Iblis, all of creation, the angels, the jinn, the humans, the beasts, the creatures, the heavens and the earth. Allah, the Malik, Rabbul Alameen. Go to the very top. Complain to him, Ya Rabbi, help me restrain this creature from when I begin my salah until I complete it. That is what you are doing when you say, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar Feel the ubudiyya, experience your servitude to Allah and your poverty and your bankruptcy and your need to him as you say, A'udhu Billahi. I can't, oh Allah, help me.